I wonder what bothers Fake Holiday more, that Marvel ripped off his black comic, or that it's still better than anything he's ever written. So let's not bury the lead. Marvel has a book out now starring Bishop that's basically the same plot and story as a black comic written by Kwanzaa Sajefo. Now, this is ironic for two reasons. One, because black is one of the worst written comics in the last decade, so it's a hell of a book to copy. And two, because Fake Holiday desperately wants to write the X-Men, and this is the closest he's ever got. The irony is incredible. I hope it lasts. And it does, with Marvel's rip-off book Bishop War College. It's written by Jay Holtham, who's a TV writer. The gist of the series is that Bishop is training some mutants and being hardcore about it. They get pissy with him, so he tries to change his tactics, having the mutant Tempo use her time powers to make the students replay out the same scenario over and over again. As this happens, the Fenris twins, the Nazi mutants, attack. This throws off Tempo's powers, knocking her and Bishop into an alternate timeline where all the X-Men are black. Now, if that sounds like a stupid story, that's because it is. It's lazy, boring, and predictable. People have told stories like this for decades. Unless you're going to explore what it would be like if black people were the oppressors, it's a waste of time. The novelty of what if so-and-so were black wore off a long time ago. However, the humor of bad writing has not. The plot makes no sense. There's no reason why Bishop would be sent to an all-black X-Men world. After all, he's not black. I seem to be the only person who remembers this. Bishop is an Australian Aboriginal. I mean, technically he's American since he was born in New York, but his parents are ethnically aboriginal. His great-grandfather is Gateway, who looks like this. But for some reason, over the last decade, Marvel has depicted Bishop as black, not just in how he's written, but in how he looks. There's no acknowledgement at all of his actual ethnic background. you think the people obsessed with identity politics wouldn't erase one of the few aboriginal superheroes, but no. So now he's black, and winds up in this all-black X-Men world. Now, I know what you're thinking. If all the non-black mutants got race swapped, does that mean that all the black mutants are now white? No, Storm is still black. Now, I still know what you're thinking. But what about characters like Nightcrawler, Colossus, and Sunfire, who are from places where there are few, if any, black people? Nope, still got race swapped. Oh, were you expecting a logic to any of this? Oh, pobrecito. No tienes idea. From the Cerebro Files, remarks by Charles Xavier on a rededication of the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters, quote, The journey here has been long and difficult, but we are here. We have made it. When I first opened my school for gifted youngsters, I had little idea where that path would take me and us all. I only knew that our kind needed a safe space. After centuries of oppression, slavery, and discrimination, the descendants of enslaved Africans in the Western Hemisphere were finally being granted the rights denied to us for so long. The right to vote, to live where we want, to a full education, to become full citizens in the United States. And you use that freedom to isolate yourselves. Doesn't that defeat the point? A safe space makes sense when you're being oppressed. You need somewhere to go where you can get away from it. But when you're allowed to go and do what you want, why do you need a safe space? Why would you want a safe space? Wouldn't you want to change the minds of the people who don't like you? How can you do that if you hide from them? I've never liked the separatist argument because you can't change anyone's mind by avoiding them. There will always be people who don't like you, be it for your race, sex, sexuality, religion, what have you. You can't stop that, but you can reduce it by being around the people who hate you. If you're around them enough, some of them will change their minds because they'll see that you're not what they thought you were. If you run away, not only will they keep hating you, but you'll also keep suspecting them, so that when you do interact with them, it's more likely to go badly. Kind of like Fake Holiday's comic book Black, which Marvel is about to rip off right here. Quote, but a new danger was rising. Black children across the country had begun exhibiting strange powers and abilities. At the time, we did not know that, through some genetic quirk, a new gene, the X gene had developed, linked directly to the genetic markers for race, as though some part of the universe wanted to give us tools to build a new world. It's curious how the genetic marker only applies to people of immediate African descent. You'd think that since humans evolved in Africa, meaning all humans are technically African, all people would have the potential for powers. 
How is it possible that the genetic markers are limited only to those of immediate African descent? What happens if someone is mixed race? Does their non-black DNA shut down the powers? These are the same questions I asked about Kwanzaa's comic Black, where the same thing happens. Only black people have superpowers. However, Holtham at least had the sense to limit when black folks got powers. In this alternate Marvel universe, we got them in the 60s. In Fake Holiday's book, we've had power since the 15th century. In other words, the entirety of the African slave trade. I've yet to figure out how you get Wolverine, Kitty Pride, Quicksilver, or Nightcrawler on a slave ship without them killing you. But that's because I have this condition where plot points need to make sense. But Kwanzaa isn't afflicted with this. So he's got his superpowered black folks running around with Jean Grey level powers getting chained up by white dudes with muskets. And that apparently goes on for 400 years of slavery to the present day, all the way to the future where the soup negroes are turned into super saiyans by the still powerless white folks who have total control over them. I'm not kidding. Watch my review of Black as Fuck, America's Sweetheart. So at least Holtham is a better writer than Fake Holiday and realize that the whole black folks always had powers idea is stupid. The file continues, quote, at first, these new powers were a cause for fear and a threat for a renewed, even worse form of discrimination. I started my school as a place for black children to learn how to use their powers for the betterment and protection of all. No matter how feared and hated we were, we had an obligation to use our abilities to safeguard life in all its forms and variations. We may not have been homo sapiens anymore, but as homo negris superior, <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> fucking insane. Right, that's enough. Wait, no, I don't know what we did. I don't know who's going to learn anything. Wait, from wait, this. wait, wait. Okay, so, okay, wait. Okay, okay. Tell me you did not just call them Homo Negris Superior. <laughs> That's so sad. That's so sad. You got one, Kwanzaa. Calling the superpower black folks empowered is much better than calling them homo negris superior. <laughs> Hold them, you know you need your ass whooped for that. To all the white folks listening, I want you to know that the black community has revoked his black card. He is a free agent. You can have him. If you got a spot open in Texas, Florida, or Tennessee, he fit right in. Homo Negra Superior. Nigga, please. Anyway, quote, For a long time, that dream seemed impossible. So many forces were aligned against us. The turning point came when I contacted this place, this being, Krakoa, and we began talking of a way to build that world I dreamed of. With Krakoa's help, I was able to get through to my old friend Eric, and together, the three of us forged this homeland. We were not without allies. Captain Rogers, Dr. Richards and his family, young Mr. Parker, you all joined our cause, even though it meant fighting against the power structures that raised you. What are you talking about? The power structures that raised them treated at least one of them, Spider-Man, as a threat, and see the others as tools to be used as needed. Have you ever read a Marvel comic book? The Fantastic Four have had run-ins with the government. You've got characters like the Hulk, whose entire story is about him running away from the government who want to turn him into a weapon. Iron Man had to deal with the government and everybody else trying to steal his tech. Captain America constantly fought against the power structures that raised him to the point of quitting instead of bending the knee. Marvel is full of examples of white characters fighting against the system, so this line about white characters essentially checking their privilege to help Homo Negro Superior is just stupid. He goes on, quote, with our united power and vision, we were able to stand together, to make discrimination and oppression of all kinds a thing of the past, to finally find a way for all of us, human, mutant, even alien, to live together. And they did this by taking over New York City. That's what this issue implies, that mutants controlled NYC and turned it into a paradise for everyone. The quote makes it sound like the whole world was changed. How they did this isn't mentioned. But it really doesn't make much sense that they were able to change the world like this, but still need a safe space like Rakoa. It continues, quote, Of course, we still have our struggles and detractors. My former colleague and friend, Moira McTaggart, and her Human Liberation Front fight to restore the world as it was, a world where one race dominates another. 
We cannot go back there. We will not go back there. Here's where this gets really confusing, because in theory, the same plot that played out in the real Marvel Universe played out here, meaning Moira should be a mutant who is trying to save her kind. We haven't seen the alternate Moira yet, unless this woman on the right is supposed to be her, but it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. In the Black comic, there were treacherous stoop Negroes who worked for the Homeland Agency of Ulterior Soldiers, aka House, in other words, House Niggas. That was how Kwanzaa solved that problem. They were all sellouts. I wonder if Holton will do the same. The file ends with this, quote, Reopening this school, inviting all who need guidance, protection, and support to attend, bringing it here, to Krakoa, the heart of our mutant homeland, this will signal the next evolution of our species, of our world. I am grateful to have you all here with me. Again, this makes no sense if the world largely accepts mutants. This is a testament to how bad of an idea this concept is. Holtham can barely get through it without it sounding like hot garbage, and he's clearly a better writer than Kwanzaa. Race swapping is one of the laziest forms of storytelling. Unless you're actually going to play on touchy concepts like oppression, discrimination, bigotry, and role reversals in an objective, nuanced manner, it's just a waste of time. We already know how the story goes. White people be evil, and the non-white people be victims, even when they have all the power. The irony is that these kinds of stories have already been told in X-Men comics. Stories like The Age of Apocalypse and House of M explore these ideas through the metaphor of mutant kind. When you make it directly about race, you're defeating the purpose of using the mutant metaphor. If the race swap is really what you want to do, then just tell that story set in an alternate version of the real world. It doesn't make sense to use something that can act as a metaphor for race to tell a story specifically about race. You're adding in a middleman where there doesn't need to be one. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.